in there seeing what these players accomplishments are and what we can expect from this match yeah when you look at that game right at the top of the bracket it's actually seed one versus seed 16 every time so it's kind of the beginning of these potential cinderella runs for the player uh, down at the bottom to take out the number one seed send them to losers and try and go on a run that said, we've got some fantastic players to, to start off our Players' Cup 4 coverage for you. Fevzi Khan, let's just take a look at these achievements. Uh, Kuln Regionals, Malmo Regionals, Cams Regionals, Bolzano Regionals, just top eights all over the place. I know he plays a lot online. He really, really grinds out some of those. And he's bringing one of the most interesting Pokemon, a Pokemon that popped up quite frequently, actually, in Europe. I believe there's four players running the Gigantamax Blastoise uh, with the Registeel, very similar teams. Uh, and Fevzi's going to be one of those players trying to pilot it and show exactly what it can do. And I know a lot of people love those G-Max moves that Venusaur, Blastoise, and Charizard have. So why not try something different for Players' Cup 4? We've seen Venusaur, we've seen Charizard. Let's get the mix up in. Of course, that Blastoise is going to have to take down Marco, who accomplished player himself. We see some champion and finalist titles under his name. Torino Premier Challenge Champion 2019. Um, finalists for Torino and Milano Premier Challenges. And this is a tried and true team here. I mean, I was wondering when we were gonna see Colossal, but we're actually just gonna start the day off with it. There's that Colossal and the Dragapult or Shifu Rapid Strike we know oh so well, paired up with the Incineroar, Rillaboom, and the Togekiss. So this has been a staple in Player Cup competitions. Obviously it fared extremely well players cup one and two making a fantastic run players cup three and surely we had to expect it in players cup four as well uh, it's been a, a staple i think and people understanding just how powerful that is uh, obviously a couple options there to set it up of the 64 players we have across all four region finals actually 12 people uh bought the colossal the gigantamax version obviously and it's one of those that people just know it can win games so i'll be curious to see how that does especially in the face of the Blastoise. It's all well and good saying, oh, I'll take a water attack and I'll, I'll set up the steam engine boost and the weakness policy. But I think Blastoise might just overpower that. So uh, Marco's going to have to play very wisely about that. And I'll be very curious to see how this team that Fevzi's bought actually fares against one of these more tried and true staple teams that we've seen for a little while now. Yeah, I'm so excited to see that Blastoise get some love next to its pals, Venusaur and Charizard, which we more frequently see. So let's start getting into this match to see what these players are going to do to try and secure a win early on. So right away, we're seeing that Dragapult here paired up with the Togekiss going up against this Landorus and Thunderous that Ebsy brought. Uh, the Double Genies are back. Uh, that's a, a, a lead that a lot of people have played over a large number of years, and it definitely can do some work. I think the Dragapult's in the position that it can do the most, because this Togekiss does not appreciate staring down both of these, uh, you know, Pokemon that can really do super effective damage to it. So this might be uh, an interesting position to find yourself in if you're Marco. Yeah, Thunderous though, just opting to go for that swap. We did get to see a little peek of what else Fevzi's brought around, and that Registeel is going to hit the field here. Marco though, looking to apply some early game pressure with this Dynamax. It's something I think he's gonna have to do, and I wouldn't be shocked to see the uh, Dragapult take it. There it is, uh, setting up. That's gonna be a Pokemon that wasn't really threatened by Fevzi's lead, so I think very smart of him to Dynamax it and set it up there. Oh, for sure, Dragapult can set up the Colossal in this team, but also apply so much pressure itself. But Fezzi not wanting to be left out of the fun, opting to go for that Dynamax as well with that Landorus. Uh, this is uh, gonna be a very big turn one for both players. Seeing exactly what they think is the safest Pokemon on their side of the field and just going, yeah, that's fine. I'm just gonna set up and immediately uh, start getting boosts, changing the terrain and, and causing problems. Uh, speaking of problems, Tiger Kiss is trying to cause some of its own. Yeah, follow me. Such a good redirector to keep your Prime Dynamax candidate or other Pokemon safe here. So this Dragapult is going to buy off a Max Phantasm into that Registeel. Um, but fortunately, there is a White Herb on this Landorus, so no defense drop there. It's going to get the opportunity to fire off a Max Airstream of its own Togekiss taking about half of it to HP, but this Landorus is going to get a nice little speed boost from that. You've got the speed boost and you don't 
get the drops, that switch into Registeel. Really, really smart there by, by Fevzi, I think, saying, yes, I know that your Dragapult can do good damage, but Registeel can actually take it. And if that had been the Thunderous, the Thunderous may have just been felled immediately there. Of course, Registeel took a lot of damage, and it's a Pokemon that likes to come in and, and maybe try and set up a little bit to, to play through the rest of the game. So definitely has to be a little bit careful for the time being, maybe buying a turn or two with the Protects that we are going to get hovered here. Um, but, uh, you know, the Togekiss is still in the field. These are both Pokemon that can deal with the Togekiss quite comfortably. Just have to make sure that while you're spending time dealing with the Togekiss, the Dragapult's not just causing chaos. Um, the White Herb's used up now, and this, you know, this Landorus could be in an interesting position if it gets caught by an Intimidate. Which is exactly what we're going to see here. Togekiss hiding in the back of this Incineroar coming out. Of course, clear body in the Registeel means nothing's happening there, but that is a definitely annoying thing for that Landorus. Registeel just taking the opportunity to protect. It'd be fantastic. You don't want it to let it go down. Landorus going to take the opportunity to get even more of his speed boost and targeting into the Dragapult, but not really doing too much after this Intimidate from the Incineroar. And Dragapult firing back with Mac Phantom, doing a lot more damage than the Dynamax across the field. Oh, the critical hit helping out there, making sure you get extra damage down. Of course, all the stat drops are going to stick now. There's no herb available to, to deal with that. And this Registeel just sort of sat on the field. Obviously, it protected. It's recovering up a little bit with leftovers. Uh, but on this last turn of Dynamax, I'm not sure how impactful it can be. The Dragapult uh, getting huge damage down on the Landorus is, is really, really big there. And it's been pretty comfortable, I think, for, for Marco so far, just being able to say, you know what, I just want to throw out attacks and just kind of push on uh, throughout this, this game. So going into the final turn of Dynamax, I think both trainers are looking to make a really big impact and carve open an advantage as soon as these very impactful turns end. I don't know how much of an impact this Landorus can make at eight out of one, but it's going to go for it anyways. Max Airstream into the Dragapult, just chipping it down, trying to get as much damage as possible. But this Landorus does have three speed boosts, so what it lacks in attack and defense, it definitely makes up for in speed. Registeel just taking that opportunity to go for the iron defense. I mean, Registeel, you want to sit there on the field. You want to be annoying. You want to get your defense up, get ready for this body presses, and just refuse to go down. It is going to take that max phantasm, but it takes it a lot more comfortably this time around. And of course, with that clear body, not going to take a defense drop in return, which is certainly nice. Cineroar, Flare Blitz does pick up the Landorus, though, as it finally goes down on its last turn of max. Now, both trainers getting through all three turns of their Dynamax, but Fevzi losing a Pokemon for the Troubles. I think he's putting a lot of focus on this Registeel. Of course, the Iron Defense are uh, really important there in making sure it can take attacks, and that's kind of the setup that you want. I think he was buying a little bit of time, maybe, with that Landorus. Getting it the speed boost, too, was really important. I know it's a Pokemon we don't usually think about being quite fast, but being able to set up your Iron Defense before you get hit within a turn is so huge, and we saw it just there being able to take attacks even from the dynamax uh dragapult even better than it normally does with its naturally very high stats uh, and this has put him i think in quite a good position to see out the game of course he does have to worry a little bit about something like that incineroar but once that's gone should be in an all right position yeah, Rillaboom hitting the field for its friend Landorus here. This Registeel, the leftovers and the grassy terrain is going to help it recover a lot each turn, which is going to be really, really helpful in keeping the longevity of it, especially with those iron defenses. We're just keeping it safe here. And Rillaboom as well, being able to offer a little bit of fake out pressure now that there's that Incineroar on the other side of the field, which could keep it safe or just go for an attack here. Uh, looks like it's going to try and weave in a bunch of attacks. I like what I'm seeing from Fevzi. Just viewing from his side, we're going to be able to get a little more insight into what he's thinking about every single turn. The switch in, quite nice. I think the Dragapult's done its work and it might be time for it to, to reset and, and come back in at a different time of the game. Yeah, of course, Tokakis taking that Grassy Glide, but taking it comfortably. But this Incineroar <laughs> faring a very different fate, going down to this Body Press. Of course, Body Press bases off of the Registeel Defense. So being able to hit for a really good amount of damage as well as just being super effective. Definitely going to be a little bit of a menace here. And as well, getting both of the recovery options in the Grassy Terrain and the Leftovers. What we're about to see is probably the Registeel Masterclass. He's 
It's been played absolutely perfect by Fevzi. It's kind of just been on the field doing its thing uncontested, but it managed to come onto the field, get a couple speed boosts, uh, sat next to the Landorus using the Max Airstream. So it's managed to set those up and then say, well, I can also weave in my defense boost. And as we see now, it's so, so fast. It's just able to start body pressing things that it might not normally be able to, to hit in advance. So really kind of wise play, I think, from Fevzi and, and showing off why a number of people in the European region did tend towards this Registeel and, and show how impactful it can be. I, I like the way this board is set up for him. The Rillaboom's now facing down the Urshifu, which it's going to be in a really good position to uh, deal with it just through Grassy Glides. And this Registeel can kind of just start tidying up where it needs, because I doubt it feels all that threatened. Yeah, Urshifu looking to try and apply some pressure on the board. Of course, though, doesn't really appreciate staring down this Rillaboom here. So it is just going to take this opportunity to go for a protect, not really wanting to risk anything too much. So unfortunately, Grassy Glide not doing anything, Body Press not doing anything. So this Tokikiss having the opportunity to do what it wants. And what it wants is an Air Slash right into that Rillaboom. No critical hit, though, is just going to be dealing a nice little chunk of damage, but not nearly enough. A good Protect for Marco buys him a little bit of time here. He gets some damage down on the board absolutely for free from Togekiss. Togekiss throwing out the, the Air Slash, I think, looking for the critical hit. Uh, obviously, a lot of Togekiss do like to, to try and play that way. And I think with the critical hit there, it might have been a very different turn. But it is kind of in a similar boat now. There's been a little bit of recovery, of course, and importantly, recovery on the Registeel. So it's kind of still just a good board for Fevzi. Yeah, he took some damage. But the Urshifu's used its Protect up in that previous turn. It's not going to be able to, or it's going to be very limited in its ability to do that twice. And Marco looks like he's definitely under pressure. Um, even though the Pokemon count is ev even, I just think the board presence is, is so, so good here uh, from Fevzi. That Urshifu being under a little pressure. Tokikiss is going to just take the opportunity to go for a follow me to at least keep it safe from this Rillaboom. It is going to go down for its trouble though, as the Registeel does get a body press into the Urshifu. It deals a good amount of damage, but the Urshifu gets to fire off a good amount back, doing a good chunk to the Registeel, but not able to pick up the KO and getting a defense and special defense drop in return. That Urshifu uh, really has to be careful now, just because it's already kind of at half health. The Grassy Glide is still available for the Rillaboom. And, and once again, the board position just so strong. The options that Fevzi has, I think being able to take out uh, the, the Togekiss with the Grassy Glide, obviously not very effective, but just powerful and able to, to work through that way are really, really important. And now just down to the Dragapult and Urshifu. Don't forget that Registeel has been sat on the field all game. It's picked up its boost. It's not really been contested in that one. And it should just be able to sit here. We saw just how impactful that Iron Defense was when it took a close combat comfortably. Then it got a couple rounds of recovery, so probably feeling pretty good about the chances to, to try and deal with this one. Yeah, all the damage it took from the Dragapult in its max seeming so far away now as it's just being able to sit here, slowly be recovering up, and that's the dangers of Registeel as well. I mean, it's hard to take down and even more difficult after all the Iron Defenses. Urshifu, not wanting to take the Grassy Glide, is just going for the Protect, of course. Evzi just going for the Grassy Glide, just to try and, try and pick that up. Sand Tomb from the Registeel is going to connect with the Dragapult and doing a little bit of image, but trapping it. Dragapult though, gonna take the opportunity for a Phantom Force and disappear. The problem with the Phantom Force here is you disappear for a turn, but within that turn, the Registeel gets the recovery. So the Registeel again, almost at half health, feeling pretty good about its chances to be able to deal with this, and you're still in a position where this Urshifu has no answer to the Rillaboom. Let's just take a look at, at how impactful, of course, that Registeel has been. It, it's taken all of these these turns, and it, it's so fast, it was outspeeding a Dragapult. Registeel shouldn't be doing that, but perfect early game play from Fevzi setting up with the speed boosts has just started to pay off, and Santum, an interesting addition to its moveset, not something I think everyone runs, but that residual damage, you know, is going to make sure the Dragapult gets knocked out as, you know, at the end of the next turn, so... Fevzi, yes, he's been playing it a little slower, uh, but he's always been in a great position. Oh, definitely. Marco fishing for that double protect on the Urshifu, but unable to hit it as the Urshifu goes down to the fastest body press in the West. 
and this Rillaboom is going to take a nice chunk of damage from the Phantom Force, but not enough, and Dragapult is going to go down for its troubles here. So Fezzi is going to be taking that game one, and I mean, wow, that Registeel put in work for the amount of damage it took on the switch in, being able to stick around and just cause so much havoc, like that was so well played. I was a little worried about it when it switched in. It, it took a really, really powerful Max Phantasm, and I thought, well, it could get caught again. But Fevzi showing off just perfectly how to play that team. Do not panic if the Registeel takes damage. It will recover. It has leftovers. You can bring it the grassy terrain as well. And being able to play that so perfectly, weave in all of that setup. I mean, at the end of the, the Dynamax turns we saw at the start, I was a little bit concerned that maybe you know losing the pokemon that was so impactful early on was going to cause a problem for, for fevzi but he wasn't scared at all he, he knew the win condition and that game went quite long i think marco made a lot of correct plays trying to buy time the follow me the protects but really didn't offer enough in return to say you know what i can start knocking things out i think if the rillaboom got knocked out would have been very very different but that rillaboom just took the hits so so well as well the longer the game goes on the longer the registeel gets to recover gets to just stick around and be an absolute menace so marco really having to consider that going into this game too so let's hop into it and see how things are going to be shaking up so this time around we will see that dragapult in the lead paired next to the incineroar though and <laughs> fevzi sticking to the same old same old going with that double genies I wouldn't be shocked to see a switch out once again here and maybe more setup. The change from Marco could be interesting to see if that maybe affects his decision. But what's really kind of cool for Fevzi here is he immediately gets to use the uh, White Herb and show exactly what it's used for. Now the Incineroar's used this Intimidate, has to switch out and back in to change those stats. And I think that's kind of the perfect use of this item as the pressure it applies now is, is really, really important. Yeah, Landorus wants to intimidate, not be intimidated, especially as a max candidate there. So it's definitely super, super nice here. And we get a little peek into what he's thinking, and I think we're going to see a nice early game max again. Both trainers locking in the Dynamax on the very first turn, saying, I'm going to carve out a big advantage. I'm going to be able to play the game my way and, and push on through the rest of them. Dragapult, once again, the max candidate. I think it was good for Marco but it just needed to do a little more and it wasn't able to do enough against the Registeel. So we'll see if he maybe tries to predict that Registeel when it's gonna come in and, and what it can do. But those speed boosts were huge and, and if Fevzi can play around that game plan again, I think Marco's gonna struggle. I'm excited to see the Thunderous in action. It did swap out first turn last game. So this time it's going to be sticking around and maybe causing a little bit of issues here for Marco. So we'll have to see what it has up its sleeve, but unfortunately not on this first turn. Cineroar wanting to play it safe, just going straight for that fake out into it. So this drag bolt gonna have the opportunity to go for a max Phantasm and just absolutely eliminate it from the field. So no swap in, Registeel doesn't take a bunch of damage, but this Thunder is going down for its troubles. Landorus though does get the opportunity to fire back a max airstream, picking up a good amount of damage considering it never got to get intimidated this time around. So it's definitely going to appreciate that. That's really, really uh, interesting. The way that I think Fevzi's looked at what happened in the last game and said, I won without the red, uh, without the Thunderous doing anything. The Thunderous literally switched out for the Registeel. So we sort of thrown it up as a peace offering to Marco and said, actually, you can knock that out. That's absolutely fine. I'll then get the Registeel in for free. It hasn't taken any damage, so it's in an even better position than it was last time. And I'm just going to put you in the same kind of corner by boosting it up with the, the Max Airstreams. Those Max Airstreams are doing even more because of the way the Intimidate uh, was negated by the White Herb. And it's really looking like we're going to get a bit of a run back of game number one from Fevzi and now the onus is on Marco to say you know what I've seen you do this and I'm not going to let you do it again I just think that's going to be really hard to avoid with what he has offered up on the field right now well, certainly the Registeel just going for the protect wanting to keep it nice and safe this time around and the Airstream we saw how much it did last time to the Dragapult but 
virtually not quite doing enough to be picking up the KO right off the bat here, but does get that speed boost and more importantly the speed boost on that Registeel. Dragapult does target into the Registeel, so that Registeel taking barely any damage. Definitely a lot nicer of a position than the first game where it took a massive Max Phantasm. Dragapult almost going down from the Life Orb, but not quite. And now that this White Herb is used up, Incineroar is going to take its chance to go for a parting shot into the Landorus and start dropping its attack. A nice bit of setup there on the Landorus, really kind of respecting uh, just how much it did. You don't want everything to get knocked out or take huge damage. So yes, your Intimidate was blocked, but you managed to drop its attack finally and its special attack, pretty irrelevant, but there is the full effect of parting shot. And of course, you managed to switch out into the Togekiss. The Togekiss can pose an interesting kind of problem or a bit of a thinker for Mark, uh, for Fevzi when he's looking down at the opposite side of the field because you do have to respect the potential follow me, but it could also just switch out just as easily um, and become the Incineroar again and land a successful Intimidate onto this Landorus. What I think is really kind of well played and definitely a bit of a focal point for Fevzi though is it's not about the Landorus dealing the damage. It's about the Landorus setting up the max airstreams and, and making sure uh, that that speed control is in play. Might be playing the last turn a little bit differently, I think, respecting some of the stat drops he's taken. Of course, the two max phantasms lowering the defense. Does just have to be respectful of that and say, well, uh, you might just be able to follow me, knock me out. I'm not going to be able to get a knockout in return because I know uh, a little bit about exactly how this is going to be. And, and Fevzi going down to the wire as he thinks about this one. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a big decision here. Definitely switch the tide of the battle, but is going to just take the opportunity to go for the max guard. Tokikiss as well, trying to keep the Dragapult safe, going up for that follow me. The Dragapult though, opting to target into the Registeel, so Landorus would have been safe, but regardless, the Registeel takes the hit pretty comfortably, all things considered, and this Dragapult the absolute beast of a Pokemon that it is, finally going down due to its own Life Orb recoil. No, getting that Life Orb recoil knockout, I think something that Fevzi was, was looking to do actually and saying, I can take an attack, um, and if you do throw an attack at the Registeel, that's absolutely fine, uh, and I'm just going to let you knock yourself out with the Life Orb. So knowing how low that was, knowing about the item, something Fevzi was, was able to play around quite wisely. Landorus did play it safe and, and maybe didn't need to in that turn, but I'm sure there's a, a end game win condition that Fevzi is already looking towards. Yeah, maybe eyeing up the Landorus as part of the end game plan. So this Registeel, just trying to start becoming a menace here, did get the opportunity at last turn to go for an iron defense. So it might not have the most HP in the world, but it does have the speed boost. It does have the defense boost. So it can definitely start proving to be a menace, just like we saw in the last game. I think I would have liked to see the speed boost uh, again, and, and that register with two speed boosts in the previous game was, was so impactful. I think getting that again wouldn't have been uh, a bad thing at all, but uh, at the same time, you, you've still got the the very fast Landorus on. The Landorus now has access to its spread moves, so making sure you're around to do that could be really important. Looking down at the Togekiss, you know, the ability for it to follow me and, and cause problems that way, I think having access to your spread moves is really, really important, uh, but it would be better if they hit. <laughs> yeah, Togekiss, no follow me, and staying safe from that rock slide as well. Close combat mm. coming out from the Urshifu. So close to picking up the KO on the Registeel, but not quite there as the Registeel just holds on with 4 HP. That Iron Defense boost proving so valuable, both in staying alive as well as dealing out massive damage with this body press and taking that Urshifu down. As Togekiss, though, is going to fire off a Dazzling Gleam, finally picking off that Registeel um, and just a little bit of chip on the Landorus, but the Registeel at least got to take some of him down with it. Registeel did exactly what Registeel wanted to do there, I think, which was uh, follow up the Rock Slide from the uh, Shifu, obviously being asked a really big ask, which was take that close combat without uh, going down. It manages to do that really, really well, and, and I think that was exactly what he needed it to do, traded it for the uh, Shifu, but now he's just in a great position. Don't forget that Landorus is very, very fast. It is losing stats, which is a little bit of a problem for it, but it's gonna be the quickest thing on the field. It is gonna be able to start rock sliding and, and hopefully just kind of seal up the game that way. Having access to the spread moves, really, really, really important, especially when that spread move is super effective on both of your opponent's Pokemon. 
It's just going to come down to whether it these spread moves do enough, but Rillaboom hitting the field here is nice. A little bit of fake out pressure from both sides of the field here, but Rillaboom being a little bit faster. So this is definitely going to be an interesting end game between the two players here. Oh, down to two versus two. I think this is a, a better position for Marco. I think he's more comfortable uh, playing this one out this time because he's not facing down the Registeel. Uh, so getting rid of that threat, really, really important. Uh, the rock slides aren't looking too great, though, um, from Fevzi's side. I mean, they're not doing much damage, and they're not hitting consistently either. A dazzling gleam from the Togekiss. Togekiss is like, let me show you how to do a spread move. Of course, dazzling gleam with a perfect accuracy and doing a lot of damage as well. So this Landorus needs to needs to get its act together. It's already not going for a bunch of damage here with multiple like attack drops. So it needs to at least be connecting with these attacks here. So a little bit unfortunate from Fancy's end, but it is going to go for a rock slide again. Finally picking up a little bit of chip damage on both of these Pokemon. Togekiss back with the Dazzling Gleam is going to pick it off though with a critical hit, not that it would have mattered. Landorus going down and it's just this Rillaboom against the world just trying to do what it can, pick up some chip damage with this U-turn, but this Incineroar pressures it all too much. So definitely a scary position for Fezzi here. Fevzi struggled with the landing those rock slides and obviously even when they landed they didn't do much damage so a bit more uh, control on, on how to play around that Landorus has really worked out for Marco and I just don't see a way that Fevzi can deal enough damage with the Rillaboom especially facing down something like the Togekiss which we know already has Air Slash. Fevzi knows that as well, he's already seen it and they do of course play as a reminder in an open team sheet situation. So this one looks like we're heading towards game number three, unless there's some absolute shenanigans. A really nice comeback from Marco, played around that Registeel, and, and I think leaving that Landorus in trouble was really, really solid from him. It, it sat on the field for a very long time. Yes, it was fast, but it wasn't that impactful. Speaking of impactful, this Togekiss looking to make an impact, bringing this Rillaboom right down, flinching it just for that extra insult to injury here. Incineroar, of course, is going to clean it up with a Flare Blitz, and Marco is going to take this second game here. So 1-1 one, one between the two players, and super, super well fought. Fantastic adjustments on Marco's end there. I mean, that Registeel caused so much issues in the first game, still managed to get little bit of distance in the second game but unfortunately it wasn't able to just do enough it wasn't as impactful as it was and i thought trading it for the urshifu was absolutely fine but when you look at the options that were in the back for marco to be able to start cleaning up that incineroar and then seeing just how weak and unable to put down big damage something like that landorus was that was really a problem and, and it looked like a solid end game the landorus had access to its spread moves again but it wasn't quite hitting them wasn't getting the flinches and, and even when it was hitting it just wasn't getting enough damage down so throughout the course of the game a little bit better board management from marco and finding a way to deal with that landorus definitely definitely paid off at the end when that was what was left behind uh, to deal with yeah, Marco taking that game, throwing the ball back down in Fevzi's court. Fevzi's going to have to adjust or make a couple of different changes going into this game three. So let's head into this and see what adjustments can be made. Of course, this is it. Both players to play this perfectly to try and move on to the next round. And this Dragapult that's put in so much work hitting the field next to the Togekiss again, though. Um, Fezzi staying tried and true, going with that Landorus Thunderous combination. I would love to see the Thunderous actually get to play the game this time. It hasn't had an opportunity <laughs> for the first two games. It switched out in the first one, which was fine. But then it didn't come back in at any point. And in the last game, it just got immediately knocked out. So I'd really like to see it play um, and see what it can do and how it can impact this match. I don't know if this is the best time for it. Obviously, it can, it can do damage to something uh, like the, the Togekiss. But once again, Thunderous will be waiting. We will be waiting a little bit longer to see exactly what it does in this matchup. Hoping this is our well, this is our game to finally see it. But later on, Registeel rejoining the field. And this should be no surprise. If it worked last time, it might work again this time. That Dragapult going 
for that max apply that early pressure it's done so well in the past games as well as the i mean this is just this it's, it's almost the same turn every game we're seeing both of these max candidates come out trying to pressure the other person while trying to be setting up their own boosts as well so max lander is joining the party both trainers know what they want to dynamax in this team and it's been consistent across all three games it's been a real kind of back and forth. I don't think there's any super obvious knockouts that can be taken. And of course, setting up the speed boost was so important in game number one, especially getting them down onto the Registeel. Speaking of game number one, we're getting pretty much the full run back, I think, of those opening turns. So Marco's gonna have to make some changes somewhere because game one wasn't his. He needs to play it more like game two. Oh, for sure, though this is definitely going to be positive for Fezzi. This is, I mean, took that game one. This is what he wants to see, you know? Max Phantasm into the Registeel. Registeel holding on comfortably, not getting a defense drop, and picking up some good amount of damage onto that Tokakiss as well. And that speedy Registeel in game one, slowly starting to make an appearance again as it gets to sit there comfortably with these Max Airstreams. Another Max Airstream. This could be that turn where Registeel protects the the lander's max airstreams to make sure it's nice and speedy that'd be two speed boosts for it and then in the following turn it iron defenses before it gets hit and then keeps on going it's kind of a with the register you've got to plan a couple of turns ahead it's something that uh, if you look at the trainers who have bought it in this tournament they're players who do look at the game uh, a little bit more ahead not just what's on the board but what's going to be able to be done in the turn after or even the turn after that so it really requires this thought and this game plan that Fevzi is going to have to execute. And, and once again, Marco has to find a way to, to stop that uh, and try and, and mix that up. This is something that happened in game number one, though, with this switch. Yeah, I feel like we've read this book before. This is playing out almost, well, it is the exact same. Incineroar hitting the field. Of course, the White Herb already being used up means there will be that attack drop. Registeel, the same as before. We've seen this. Go in for that protect, keeping it nice and safe. Max Airstream into the Dragapult, and I'm sure we all can expect what's happening next from this Dragapult. I haven't seen any switch ups so far into the game, but Ooh. finally it was going to be one. Max Airstream not wanting the Registeel to have all of that speed that it did in the first game and opting to try and get a little bit of speed back. That's really, really impactful actually, because the biggest problem in game number one, when this Registeel kind of ran away with it, was it was just the fastest thing on the field. It was able to set up the iron defenses beforehand. And I love this adaptation from Marco to say, you know what, I'm not just gonna let you be the fastest. That's ridiculous. I have Max Airstream too. Throwing one down from his Dragapult, maybe changing that one up. The Registeel may not be as free to land one of those iron defenses and, and try and, and set things up. Of course, the Registeel already has two boosts, but at least Marco's mixing it up. At least Marco sees that, hey, I can't immediately take knockouts or I can't immediately cause problems, so let me get involved in this speed control matchup that I kind of ignored for potentially the first couple of games. This is the first Max Airstream that the Dragapult's thrown out onto the field, and I think this could be changing things up and make, making Fevzi ask a couple more questions of how his game plan works. It's definitely a nice switch here. Landorus, though, firing back with an airstream of its own, really just trying to boost up its speed to get this Registeel to be as fast as it can be to try and take down this Pokemon on Margo's end here. So unfortunately, not going to be going second in the turn here, and it is going to take a massive Max Phantasm from this Dragapult. Last time it got to Iron Defense before taking the hit, unfortunately, not this time around. It does get to go for the Iron Defense after, but might be a little too late here, depending on this Incineroar, but it's gonna go for that parting shot instead into the Landorus, just wanting to lower that attack even more. I mean, this Registeel's kind of in a bit of a dangerous spot, so just wanting to put the Landorus in a bad position as well. This is a really good example of why best of three is such an interesting way to play the game, because both trainers have kind of looked at at what works in their wins, what works in their losses, and learned a whole lot for them. Fevzi running back that game plan from game number one, which he won comfortably, being able to say, okay, I tried something different, um, and it didn't quite go my way in, in game number two. So going back to that, really wise, I think both trainers have bought the same four across every single game, so uh, feeling pretty solid uh, about that one. And again, the maxes have been consistent across the board, but Marco making 
a really good change with that max airstream that we didn't see before and, and how impactful that was in not allowing the iron defense to go up before the max phantasm hit you're not gonna be able to lower its stats you just gotta work your way through it really really important and this registeel in a very dangerous predicament really very low on health going to need a lot of time to recover enough to withstand a close combat from urshifu this has just been played really really well the best kind of thing for for febzy here is that the urshifu doesn't have any speed boost and the registeel does but I think there's a lot of adaptations from Marco, such as weakening the Landorus, that are going to be very important as we approach the end of this set. Oh, definitely. And in face of an Urshifu, a Registeel is never really safe to protect, so can't really sit there and try and get all that leftovers recovery. But we are going to see the Landorus swap back out. I mean, it had all the speed boosts, but it also had all of those attack drops, so Resetting those and bringing the Rillaboom out to pressure into this Urshifu. The Urshifu, though, just fired an Aqua Jet off into the Rillaboom here, takes it comfortably. And speaking of comfortably, this Registeel living that Dragon Dart, it does pick up some good chip on the Rillaboom, but this Registeel gets the opportunity to stick around and go for a big body press into the Urshifu. And of course, gonna get double that recovery with the leftovers and this grassy terrain. I I think Marco may be underestimating there just how good that iron defense is going to be because a Dragon Darts isn't going to do it and maybe expecting the the way that it's going to play out, you know, looking to, to land maybe a double attack over on the, the Rillaboom or what was the Landorus and, and just deal with that. But Fevzi making the change that he didn't in game number two, another adaptation from one of these trainers to say you know what something bad happened to me in game two i got stuck with this weak and landorus and i will not let this happen again so both trainers constantly learning constantly making different changes and plays throughout the course of the set and this has been a really really good one to open players cup four on of course we still got to wrap this one up and both trainers uh, still have all four pokemon actually available to them obviously at very different levels of health but we're in a, a different position i think than we've been in the past couple of games where we'd always had a Pokemon knocked out by this time. Oh, for sure. And this Dragapult, just looking ahead in the back, Togekiss joining in the field, Urshifu just taking this opportunity to protect. I mean, it's not too safe going off against this Rillaboom. And Rillaboom, of course, pressuring that slot, going for the Grassy Glide there. Registeel with the Sandtomb, but the switch from Marco into the Togekiss means Sandtomb isn't going to land. So, I mean, this Registeel gets the recovery this turn, but doesn't get to do too much else. But this recovery is adding up. That's a good turn for the Registeel, actually. It might not land the Sand Tomb, and that is, yes, that's a little bit annoying. But it doesn't take any damage. Obviously, it can't be protecting, so it manages to get the recovery without kind of having to deal with any of that. And that, this looks very similar to game number one, where, don't forget that Registeel sat there with speed boosts. That Registeel is scary. Uh, and that's something that I think uh, Marco is going to have to play around a little bit. The Urshifu isn't going to be able to attack before it. I like the switch out to bring Togekiss in here and allow Togekiss to throw out that redirection, throw out that follow me, or at least the threat of it, and then buy time for the Urshifu to do what Urshifu does best and, and clean up late games uh, because there's so limited protects that you're going to be able to use if you're Fevzi. I mean, limited, you shouldn't be using any in front of an Urshifu. That's exactly what we're going to see. Follow me from the Togekiss, keeping the Urshifu nice and safe and giving it the opportunity to go for a surging strikes here into the Registeel. Of course, these are all critical hits, ignoring the defense boost and is going to be picking up that KO. So finally dealing with this absolute menace with this Registeel and Rillaboom is going to fire off with a wood hammer and pick up that Togekiss as well. So not being able to get the Shifu, but the switch from Grassy Glide to Woodhammer, being able to deal just enough damage to take that Pesky Tokus out of the way. That's a very good turn for, for both trainers. They get to remove what they consider a big threat from the opposing side just very, very easily. I really, really like how Marco targeted down the Registeel and by using that turn of redirection that the Togekiss had, uh, was able to, to deal with that Registeel using Surging Strikes to make sure that the knockout came through and, and didn't have to worry about being body pressed for a turn. But on Fevzi's side, we've got to give him credit as well for changing up to the Woodhammer. Of course, the Woodhammer does more damage than the, the Grassy Glide, and just respecting that follow me, being able to remove that from play in the following turn, 
really, really important. So a really smart play from both trainers and at three to three, we are finally going to get to see Thunderous. We do. It gets to join the field facing off against this Incineroar here. I mean, this Incineroar does have fake out pressure. So interesting to see where it's going to be targeting into. But I'm hoping to see this Thunderous actually get to do something. It didn't really, it didn't get the opportunity to in the first game because the Registeel is the star, star there. The second game, Marco didn't even want to mess with the Thunderous. And now is hopefully it's time to put in some work. The Thunderous isn't running Defiant either. This is one of those meta shifts that I think a number of trainers have looked at. Um, it, in previous iterations of the players kept people running it with Defiant and it would be really, really good to bring in in front of this Incineroar. But now, didn't see that Defiant boost, heading on back to the classic Prankster, if you will, and being able to kind of play the game a little bit differently, throw, trying to throw down pressure with those Thunder Waves uh, because the speed control that Fevzi set up earlier is kind of gone but I like that he's pivoting over to a second form of speed control and, and something a little different to be able to, to deal with this. A really nice switch in there with the U-turn uh, could be impactful, especially landing Intimidates on both of these Pokemon. Yeah, the Yoshifu though, not wanting to risk the Thunder Wave, going for the Protect. Incineroar though, going to take the opportunity to be hitting a Flare Blitz into what was the Rillaboom slot, but Rillaboom, you turning out is keeping it nice and safe as the Slanderous takes the hit instead and getting a attack drop on Marco's side of the field here. That attack drop could be very impactful. The Incineroar we saw was doing a good amount of damage. The Urshifu obviously does crazy amounts of damage and that's a really good ability. And this sort of a, an adaptation and a lesson that Fevzi took how impactful was the Intimidate on his side of the field in game two? If you've got access to an Intimidator, why leave it on the bench? Why not make these plays where you switch it in and out, you rotate through it, uh, kind of cycling to make sure that your opponent can't deal damage? It may not be the most glamorous way to, to close up a game, but it's really, really impactful. And I like looking at the board where you've got the Thunderous and the Landorus. The Landorus is trying to mix things around and, and deal with uh, as much as it can, while the Thunderous just applies pressure uh, the Stragapult switching could get very easily punished. Yeah, Fabzi not want to be left out. Also going to be going for that swap, bringing the Rillaboom back out onto the field for the Thunderous, for the Landorus, sorry. Thunderous, though, taking the opportunity to fire off a Thunderbolt into the Urshifu slot, and it is going to pick up that KO anyways on the Dragapult. Incineroar just looking to pivot, getting a parting shot into the Rillaboom slot, and I mean, it's going to be coming out and rejoining the field in the second, but it is going to be rejoining the field with another Intimidate drop onto that Rillaboom. This is kind of smart planning ahead from Febzi. Getting the Landorus out serves two purposes. One, it makes sure that uh, you're able to land another Intimidate when you're locked in, if you're Marco, to the Urshifu and the Incineroar. And it also keeps it safe from any drops that came its way. That was such a big problem for him in game number two that getting it out of there, yes, your Rillaboom's not going to be in the strongest position right now. It's, it's taken a parting shot and now an Intimidate, but you're able to switch that out. And Marco, down to his last two, is not going to be able to make any more changes. So if he's going to find the win in this game, he has to find them with these two Pokemon. I mean, these are two very strong Pokemon, though. We've... I mean, Incineroar would not have the usage it does if it wasn't just an impactful Pokemon. And Urshifu as well has been such a dominant force. So if two Pokemon can make it happen, it could be these two. But Marco is going to have to play this carefully and be getting these turns right. So, I mean, Fevzi offering so much pressure onto the Urshifu slot, though. I mean, that's Rillaboom as the Thunderous. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. Fevzi also has the fake out pressure here. The Incineroar isn't the only one, and we will see that fake out into the Incineroar, not letting it do its thing. Urshifu firing back with a surging strike, though, into the Rillaboom. May maybe go for the swap, but virtually is not going to be dealing nearly enough damage to get anywhere there. The Thunderous now, with every opportunity to fire off with attack of its own into the Urshifu and taking it down. Almost, I think, the desperation play from Marco there, trying to call that lander a switch in, punish it immediately with the surging strikes. But Fevzi just plays it safe. He respects that the fake out matchup was there and says, okay, I'll just make sure that my faster fake out option is gonna be able to stop yours. And then it's still on the field and, and surging strikes just wasn't able to do enough. So really well played there 
by Fevzi. Marco looking for the big play, but Fevzi not taking the bait and just being able to work around it. Incineroar's being given the opportunity to try its best. It does get to fell the Rillaboom, so leveling or bringing the Pokemon count a little bit closer, but I do not see a way that Incineroar, while taking recoil, is going to be able to clean this one up. Yeah, Flare Blitz is such a strong attack, but it's not really the attack that's going to get you too far in a 3v1 endgame. I mean, the amount of damage you have to be dealing and the amount of damage you take back, not so fantastic. And to boot, this Landorus rejoining the field, not only is super effective against this Incinera, but has the attack drop as well. So this one is going to be going to Fevzi, but fantastic match here regardless. What a match to open up Players Cup 4 with. I think these trainers really showcased some of the, the best options uh, that you can see on their teams. And what I'm really, really excited to see was three games with the same four Pokemon selected every single time, and then very different outcomes and very different play styles. Both trainers are just playing every game really, really well, making sure they're really close, really competitive. Um, but 